O.C. Oshoma is an eight-year-old. He is no longer in the physical school, thanks to the ban on schools following the COVID-19 outbreak across Nigeria. He now has to learn from home. When I heard about the lockdown, I wasn't really that kind of, I mean, school fun. But now, I've never been indoors this much. So, I really miss school. He is a primary school pupil and his brothers, secondary school students. Together, they admit that learning from home has its own challenges. I was preparing to write the junior exam and the pandemic now hit and we have to come back home. And now that the classes are online, it's harder to ask the questions that you need and get the answers or the quick responses. Because teachers are too busy trying to, some are trying to control the class. So sometimes we're up to 60 something in the class. These children have had to stay at home for six weeks. In their opinion, physical schooling and online education are worlds apart. Normally in physical school, there's, there's more time to go and meet a teacher to ask for questions that you're not clear on or topics you're not clear on. But since there are time limits on the calls or the classes online, there's, there's a limit to the number of questions you can ask online. So it's, it's, most teachers don't want to entertain a lot of questions. I'm concerned that my parents are spending more money. We have classes and on fuel, and the, the, it has to be power for the Wi-Fi to be on. But if you must study online, then one virtue you must develop is discipline. Most times you tend to get distracted when you're on in classes and people are doing things around you. But you, you have to let everyone know that this time I'm on my class, this time I'm going to be writing notes. And it appears children are not the only ones adjusting to the full realities and attendant challenges of online schooling. Mrs. Oshoma opens up on her struggle with aiding her boys to school from home. So the online education is a new experience for everybody, both for the parents and for the children, because um, prior to this time, not, not all parents are online savvy, and um, the children as well, you know, are also, you know, trying to get used to having to um, be at home, but still have, you know, they're at home, but it's like they're in school. So they have to wake up at a particular time for their uh, Zoom classes. The teachers also as well are getting used to the fact that they have to sit in front of a screen and talk to the students. And some of the teachers as well are also trying to get used to the Zoom. Okay, for me personally, network is um, crazy. The teacher as well, they, they also experience that. So while the students are in class, you find that, you know, it goes blank, the teacher has gone off and then they're struggling to come back on. With the rise and spread of the coronavirus disease and the consequent partial lockdown of schools, one thing children wish for is for life to return to normal again. They can't wait to return to schools. I, I miss my classmates. My fear is if there's no, if the government does not find the cure on time for the COVID-19 pandemic, we'll have to stay extra time in school and that won't be very good. But one thing comes to mind, even if more well-to-do families like the Oshomas can afford laptops, cell phones and essentially data, one question is, how about low-income Nigerian families, the children of the poor? How did these ones cope with online education? Faithia is one of those kids, a primary school pupil. Her mum cannot afford a laptop or data to get her to join other kids online. Because of Corona, our parents don't have money to buy lots of us. That is why, because she don't have money, we don't need to go internet. That is why we study at home. My daughter, she not have laptop to go school online because I did not have money to buy laptop. Maybe they feel help me to buy laptop for him to go school online. I don't have money to send my children online education yeah, in the house. To tell you the truth, it has not been that easy, but we have been trying our best. 
You know, online schooling is not easy. It's not that easy to do it to children. Because when it's very, the children these days, some of them are very stubborn. They may not understand what you are teaching them. Or if you tell them to sit down to do this, they may not understand it. If there was free internet services, more people would have been able to. What of the less privileged? Because the way that this online schooling is going, is only people that can afford it that can do it. But those that can't afford it, their children will be left out. And it's not supposed to be so. My phone got broken. We are there using the phone to walk. Look at it. This is all the lose you are getting. Daddy, daddy, I want to do assignment. Look at the phone. And it's costing me 35 times now to change the screen. So this is the problem we are facing. My daughter was telling me they want to write a test. She's in Babcock University. And I have to pay like 10,000 for them to continue with the test they are talking about. And this is something we have paid 1.9 million for prior to this time, before the lockdown. Now they came up with online education, online tests, online exams. And we are paying extra. We are paying like 10,000 per subject. A lecturer is demanding for 20,000. A lecturer is demanding for 20, 30,000 per subject, which is not done. It's so annoying, so upset for us to have paid school fees. And we are now paying online education, extra fees, which is getting us angry, so upset. I have paid 10,000 this morning for just a subject of mass comp, which is not supposed to be so. It's annoying. It is not help. It's not helping at all in any way. And how about kids with special needs? Mrs. Funlayo Ajenagu is an administrator of a school for children with special needs. And nobody talked about special needs children. So we have found that we seem to be overlooked. That that um, um, sector in education seems to be to have been overlooked, and nothing is really being done for them. But also, um, with, with us, it, because some of our children are high functioning and they're um, in um, mainstream schools, some of our children cannot function very well in mainstream schools and then centers. We, we have to look at the two ends of the special needs spectrum. And so the, those who are in mainstream schools are working with their schools. Their schools have found a way to include them, even in um, their distance learning. Those who cannot function in mainstream schools or in centers are those who really are, have been left behind. There are also fears of students losing an entire school year as the Lagos state government lately released a statement indicating that there will be no third term. So, if COVID-19 persists, if there is no cure for the COVID-19, what will be the future of education in Nigeria. I'm talking about the future. Of course, the future is technology. The future is digital. The future uh, uh, of education globally, not just in Lagos or in Nigeria, is to begin to look at how technology can be explored and unnerved for uh, the global good in transforming learning and transforming lives in, in our society. So uh, while we keep looking at options on a long-term basis, we're also ensuring that we're leveraging technology and the media to continue teaching our young people and our pupils at home. This education board has introduced different programs and mechanisms to ensure that even at home, children are learning and they're able to get the best quality of education. So they're part of the means that we're using is the television system. So we have teaching program going on LTV8 every day from around 5.30 to 6.30. And at other times, we're on radio or on Facebook, or on YouTube with content. The primary and secondary institutions are not the only ones affected. Tertiary institutions are also affected, and some universities, such as the Lagos Business School, have fully embraced online education using Zoom and WhatsApp. Plus TV Africa catches up with the university's vice chancellor, who has fully embraced working from home. Okay, so tell me, um, what adjustments has the um, Pan-Atlantic University been able to, you know, make in order to adjust to the whole um, COVID-19 pandemic as a university? Actually, to be sincere, there have been uh, several important adjustments. Now, both the Lagos Business School and the Enterprise Development Center they were already doing a lot of work online, so for them it was not difficult to 
to transfer to the new situation. So what I am sure is that in the future we will use much more online than, than we have done before. Because people are now familiar with the, with the new system. We can see that in some situations it has advantages. But no, I, I don't think that uh, education is going to migrate online at all. Okay, let, let me be sincere with you. The, 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 great, the great problem to teach online is connectivity. We are lucky because the 99% of our students are living in different cities. Most of them have proper connectivity. Now, if you are a university in which many of your students perhaps live in rural areas and have poor connectivities, that is a very big challenge. So one thing is what we can do and what some other private universities can do a different matter is what all universities in the systems in the system can do. That depends much more on actions by the federal government. The other, the other big problem, and our students were complaining, is that when you teach online, especially using Zoom, it spends a lot of data. That is why we have to give now data to free data to all our students. A great problem in teaching online is that it requires a lot of self-discipline by the students. With cases of the COVID-19 on the rise and almost hitting 10,000 cases in the country and uncertainty over the future of classroom learning, no one knows if online education would be the new normal. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Thank you.